Are you able to validate your feelings? Do you know what validation is? In this episode, I'll teach you what validation is and how you can start validating yourself today. This is going to help you connect your cognitions with your present moment experience, something that is very important when it comes to trauma recovery. My name is Justin Sinceri. I'm a therapist and the creator of the Polyvagal Trauma Relief System. Welcome to Stuck Not Broken, where I teach you how to finally get relief from trauma using clear language and practical techniques. This podcast is, of course, not therapy, nor is it intended to be a replacement for therapy. So I've been working on a new book that focuses on unstucking from trauma based on phase three of my polyvagal trauma relief system. I don't have a date for you yet uh, for when it'll be available, but it will be something that I'm selling through my website at first, and at least as of right now, and also including in my course, uh, my courses as a download. For now, though, I just wanted to read a section to you on validation. I'll also have this available on my blog. It's called What Validation Is and How It Helps in Trauma Recovery. Link will be in the description. It's possible to shift your state from the top down, from the body to the brain. The brainstem acts as the intermediary point for this two-way communication. Signals from the body come up to the brainstem and are sent to the brain. Signals also come from the brain to the brainstem, then are sent down to the body. You can shift your state from the bottom up through things like dancing, singing, and yoga. You can shift your state from the top down through things like affirmations, safety memories, mindfulness, or your imagination. For example, when I remember my daughter squeezing my finger when she was born, this instantaneously brings me to my safety state and a soft smile spreads on my face as I remember it. It can be helpful to use top-down messages to help regulate your defensive state and even open the possibility of further polyvagal ladder climbing. I have three top-down self-regulation openers I want to teach you. These are not intended to bring you to a polyvagal state of safety and social engagement in and of themselves. These are intended to provide a cognitive baseline to help you attune with what is happening from the bottom up to align your cognitions with your felt experience. They help to open a path for self-regulation to occur. The three top-down state openers are validation, normalization, and giving permission. I'm just gonna focus on validation for this one. Validation is the act of recognizing and accepting what is happening within without necessarily approving or liking it. It's an acknowledgement of the objective truth of an emotional experience without judgment and without evaluation. It's about allowing yourself to feel what you feel without trying to change or suppress those emotions. Validation is also not explaining why. If you're feeling sad, then you're feeling sad. That's it. The why of your sadness is generally important, of course, but in that moment, simply recognizing the emotional experience is validating. If you go into why you feel sad or the history of your sadness, maybe, you're no longer validating. These questions are important, but not for this step of validation. Validation could also take place through other experiential domains like your cognitions or your sensations, your impulses, but we're going to focus on the emotional experience for the time being. That's probably going to be what's most noticeable for you anyways. Validation is just recognizing what is objectively true. Your emotions truly are there. You're not making these things up. They are real. They are important and they are significant. That's validation. Validation might be challenging for you, though. Acknowledging and accepting our emotional experiences can be a big challenge, especially if we haven't received validation from others or if we struggle to validate ourselves. If you were raised in a home that dismissed your emotions, then validating yourself may be difficult. If you've been in relationships where you've been told how you feel versus you recognizing for yourself how you feel, then this might be a challenge for you. Ideally, you're able to recognize what you're experiencing, express it to someone else, and have them be in agreement with what you're experiencing. It could sound as simple as saying, I'm feeling really down recently. The other person might say, sounds like you're sad. Now imagine if the other person said, get over it, or there's no reason to feel that way. Those statements are highly dismissive and lacking compassion. Those statements would be invalidating. In no way do I expect everyone in your life to be validating, by the way. Most likely they they won't be, and it's unrealistic to expect that. 
However, ideally, you would receive validation from those closest to you, parents, caretakers, teachers, friends, uh, partners. Ideally, these are the people that would be able to provide you with validation, meaning they could name your feelings along with you or use similar language to describe what you're going through. Unfortunately, this lack of validation from yourself or from others can contribute to your stuck defensive state, preventing you from moving towards climbing your polyvagal ladder. Invalidation may lead to a misalignment between your thoughts and your emotions. Instead of cognitively recognizing what is emotionally true and currently happening, your cognitions may shift to what others have told you is true or what others have told you to do with your thoughts. Pretend for a moment that you live in a chronic feeling of aloneness. And maybe you don't have to pretend that hard. Maybe you do exist in a chronic feeling of aloneness. If you were to validate yourself, you would name it as feeling alone. Or maybe recognize you have a true experience of wanting to isolate yourself. Those would be validating. But maybe you were raised in a home that told you to be strong and get over it. So you instead focus on those types of dismissive cognitions, which invalidate your true emotional experience. What you are reflexively doing is focusing on what you have been told to do about the feeling of aloneness versus just allowing the feeling of aloneness. Are you purposefully invalidating yourself? Of course not. You, like so many other people, are probably reflexively using dismissive cognitions and behaviors that you were taught. And those have served a purpose for you up until this point. But it might be time to try out some validation instead. In reality, you may be desperate for validation. Maybe frustrated with not having gotten it or being able to give it to yourself. If that's the case, it sounds to me like there is something you can give yourself validation about. It's important to recognize that our emotions are real, significant, and deserving of acknowledgement and acceptance, even if they may not feel good good or pleasant. Again, it's not about liking it. It's not about feeling good. It's just objectively accepting that it is what it is. I feel the way I feel right now at this moment. It is true. I do have these thoughts. I do have these feelings. This may not be easy and I can validate that for you. If I were to ask you to validate somebody else's feelings, I think you could. If you were to see someone who was fidgety, didn't make eye contact, was tense and pacing around, you might say, hey, you seem really anxious. That person might be able to say, yeah, I'm really stressed out. And that's validation. You're recognizing what is true and naming it the best you can. Now I need you to apply that to yourself. I know it's not easy, but it's generally possible. If you can't validate yourself right now, that's okay. But this might become really important, especially if you're actively working on unstucking your trauma, like through my polyvagal trauma relief system. Validation is extremely important for more direct self-regulation work, which I, of course, explain in ridiculous detail on how to do in phase three of polyvagal, my polyvagal trauma relief system. It might help you to have a list of possible emotions, even ones that are broken into general categories to help validate yourself. I created something called SSIEC that you can use. That stands for State, Sensation, Impulse, Emotion, and Cognition. It provides you with vocabulary to help you name your sensations, your impulses, your emotions, and your cognitions, and also connects them with your polyvagal state. I'll have a link to that in the description. If you sign up for my email list, you could download that for free. If naming is indeed too much, you could also generally name what you're going through as close as you can. Maybe you don't know you feel nervous, but you know you feel something in the realm of anxiety. So you could say, I'm feeling anxious. And that gets you a step closer to the true felt experience that you're having. I also highly recommend that you practice validating when your emotions are not too big, not too explosive, not too dysregulated. Practice throughout the day during mundane things or during transitions. How do you feel when you wake up in the morning? How about when it's hard to get out of bed? How about on the way to school or to work? How about when you're in social situations that you'd prefer not to be in? How about in traffic on the way home? What can you emotionally validate when you impulsively want to have junk food? You could try validating your present moment experience right now, actually. What is it that you notice you're feeling? Anything obvious sticking out to you? 
Anything that is generally more of a defensive or a safety state activation that you're noticing? Do you feel calm, anxious, angry, numb, disconnected, irritated, worried, connected, or something else? Is it something in the general realm of these emotions? Validation can actually help in trauma recovery. Essentially, it's important to figure out how to genuinely validate yourself. The emotions and feelings that you have are real, and it may be the reason why you're seeking help through a resource like this podcast episode. In my trauma recovery process, it's helpful to acknowledge and accept your emotions for what they are and just what they are, no more and no less, without evaluation or judgment as best you can. Once you can do this, you can then move on to the next two self-regulation openers, which are normalization and giving permission. Validation brings your conscious awareness to what is truly happening in the moment. It begins the process of aligning your cognitions in the present moment with your bottom-up somatic experience. Validation helps to reduce the reflexive thoughts that you tell yourself to make your feelings go away. And if you can successfully validate yourself, it may also lead to a reduction in behavioral adaptations to your stuck defensive state. Validation is extremely important in laying a top-down foundation that helps you align in the present moment to notice your emotions as simply what they are and to begin to allow for their existence. Once you are aligned in the present moment, you can then begin to directly experience your emotions as they are. As you mindfully attune to your feelings, polyvagal ladder climbing can begin to happen as your natural capacity for self-regulation opens up. Fellow stuck down, I hope you enjoyed that segment from my upcoming book, uh, date, title, everything unannounced and unknown at this point but it's something I'm, I'm writing. I hope that was helpful for you. It's a work in progress. And yeah, I hope this episode in general has been helpful for you as a resource in your process of learning and applying the polyvagal theory, especially to your trauma relief uh, process, your journey. Again, I have a nifty gifty for you. It's the SSIEC download. Uh, if you go to the description and tap on the link there, sign up for my email list and you'll get the download right away. Actually, not right away. You have to first verify your email. <laughs> Otherwise, bye. This podcast is not therapy, not intended to be therapy or be a replacement for therapy. Nothing in this creates or indicates a therapeutic relationship. Please consult with your therapist or seek for one in your area if you are experiencing mental health symptoms. Nothing in this podcast should be construed to be specific life advice. It is for educational and entertainment purposes only.